name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Hello, everyone. My name is Mahadir Matios. I'm 11 years old, and the church I attend is Masaka Zahai Kudus I'm also a student at Virginia Avno Gorgoros Academy, Alexandra Branch. And my name is Maadus Nabi Yadul. I am 10 years old. The church I attend is Masaka Zahai Kudus Taklamanot. And I go to the same school as my dad. We hope you're having a great holiday. We have a special program for you today regarding the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right, Marot? Yes, my dad. We have a special guest for you today. Our visitor will tell us all about the birth of our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Hello children, how are you? Good. Good, I'm glad that uh, you all came together today uh, to celebrate the Feast of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the Feast of the Incarnation, the Feast of His Birth. So I hear you have some questions for me, so I'm prepared to answer. But however, are you also ready to answer some questions that I may have? Okay, good. So who is going to ask the first question? All right, go ahead. Why was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ born? Why was our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ born? Um, so I'm going to ask you that first before I answer. Is that okay? So who's going to tell me or who has an answer? All right, you first. I think our Lord Jesus Christ was born to save us from sin, death, and temptation. Okay. Uh, you want to try? No, it's the same thing, really. All right. You can put the mic down. So she said, what did she say? Our Lord Jesus Christ was born to save us from sin, sin death, 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 and temptation. And temptation. Um, those are all correct. Those are all correct. Um, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ was born because He promised Adam. Who was Adam? The first, the first man that God created, right? And He promised Adam that He was going to save him from death in 5,500 years or in God's terms, five and a half days. Okay? So what does that mean? When God created Adam, Adam was a li living soul. He breathed in him a living spirit, a living soul that would never die. God did not create death. Death was not created by God. What brought upon death to, our, to, to Adam? Because of the apple from the tree that he ate. The apple from the tree. So, when Adam was created and God placed him in Eden, he gave him a commandment. He said, you can eat from all the trees in the garden, but of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, you should not eat. Because in the day you eat, you will die. And that was the commandment that God gave Adam and Eve. But because of the temptation of the devil, the serpent, Adam and Eve ate from the fruit of the midst of the garden. And because they ate of it, death, just like God said, you would die, right? Because God said you would die, and everything that God says is true and is just, death came to Adam. If he didn't eat the tree, if he didn't disobey, that wouldn't have happened. And you may think, well, why would Adam do that? Why would Adam disobey God? Well, there was someone in the garden or something, right? The serpent. And inside the serpent was who? The devil. The devil, right? Satan was hidden inside the serpent. And he approached our mother Eve and told her a lie. And our Lord Jesus Christ says that the devil is the father of all lies. And the lie he said was that if you ate from the fruit, you will not die. You will actually be like God. 
and you will know good and, and bad and evil. And so Eve believed him because since then there was no reason for her not to believe it. And in her heart, she wanted to be like God. And so she disobeyed the commandment and she ate of the fruit and she gave to Adam and he ate and they both ate at the same time. And at that moment, because they, they did not believe God's word and they had doubt in God's word, death came to Adam. That was the punishment that he received. And so at that moment, Adam and Eve says, the Bible says what happened. What was the first thing they realized? They were? Naked. naked. They were naked means that before they ate of the fruit, they were clothed in God's grace, in the Holy Spirit. And when they disobeyed God, that spirit left them. And that's what it means by nakedness. They were separated from God from that moment. And any time we are separated from God through sin, that's what happens to us. Our soul becomes naked. And that's why it's so important to always, always be close to the church and always obey God's commandments. Okay? Does that make sense? Are you with me so far? Yes. And so when Adam committed the sin, he became fearful. He became sad and depressed, to use the words of today. I mean, really severely depressed because he lost the one thing that gave him so much joy and happiness. He lost love, true, true love. The whole world was created for Adam, right? I'm sure you, didn't we learn about that the other day? When God created the world, the last thing he created was who? Adam, because he prepared the whole world for Adam. And everything was for Adam's glory so that God can be glorified in Adam. That was, that was God's plan. But unfortunately, when this happened, Adam realized when he lo what he lost, and he lost something great. And so God, being who he is, he is love, he is forgiving and merciful. He told Adam that I will save you. And he showed Adam the vision of the Virgin Mary. And when he saw the Virgin Mary and that she was clothed in this beautiful garment of the Holy Spirit that Adam lost, he realized that God was going to forgive mankind and that they were going to be clothed again in, in the glory of God. That's what gave him hope, right? When he saw the Virgin Mary. And so Adam since then and Eve tell, were telling their children saying, don't lose hope. God is going to be born. God is going to come and save you. Since that time, Adam would tell his sons, and, his, and those sons will tell the next generation, and on and on and on and on. And so did, we fasted before we, before we celebrated the birth of, of our Lord today, correct? Yes. We fasted. Anyone that's seven, over seven years old has to fast, as we learned, correct? So when we fast, we're preparing for the birth of our Lord, but we're also remembering that our fathers, the prophets, okay, the prophets are, are the ones that, that God was using and saying, I will be born. I will be born like Isaiah was saying that a virgin was going to give birth and his name is going to be Emmanuel, okay? So God was preparing the world for his birth, right? And then the final prophet, who can tell me who the final prophet was? He's in the New Testament. You're going to get a special gift if you know this. He's in the New Testament. He is the preparer. He's called the forerunner of our Lord. He is the one who is preparing the people to finally, finally receive God into this world. What was his name? Go ahead. Grab the mic. Um, I think I'm wrong, but Matthew. Say Matthew wrote the first, the first gospel, but that's not him. He's a prophet, last prophet. His cousin, um, John the Baptist. John the Baptist, correct? John the Baptist said, right? And in, in, in you can find this in the Gospel of John. When he saw the Lord, he said, Behold, the Lamb 
of God who takes away the sins of the world. Follow him. So he is the preparer. He is the one who told the people that God finally, finally is going to redeem mankind, not just Israel, not just a, just, just a small group of people, a small nation in the world. The sins of the world. He didn't say the sins of Israel, the sins of a certain type of people, right? Certain tribes, the sins of the world. And so the number one reason is that our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ was born so that he can raise Adam from death and give him what he had before, which was eternal life. Life with him forever. Right? Beza kullu alam yom tawalda. Beza means an appropriation. Savior. Savior of the world. The Savior of the world. And He saved us from death, as you mentioned. But it's not just death, but eternal death. Eternal death means forever, right? And forever separation from God, and that's truly death. So this is what our Lord God and Savior came to do. The, the second reason is very short, is that He came to show us our, we're created in His image. Since we're created in His image, he sh and we lost that image when we disobeyed, right? When we disobeyed, we lost that image because we sinned. And when we sinned, what we say? The wages of sin is death is what? The Bible says. The Bible says if you, if you have a bad desire and you disobey God and you sin, then you die. Okay? And when you die, it's not just a death that we see here, it's eternal death. It's being separated from our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ forever. So that is a very bad thing. So our Lord came and showed us by example how to live as Christians, how to live a good, as, a, as, a, as a proper human being. Our, do you know the Apostle St. Paul? St. Paul said, imitate me because I imitate Christ. So our Lord Jesus Christ taught the apostles, taught the um, disciples how to live as a God-like person, how we were created in God's image. And now that God's image in us is perfected, and every day God makes us better people. That's why we go to church, is to be better people. So He showed us how to live. He prayed every morning. Our Lord, before the sun came out, He went to His own place and He prayed. He was very kind to others, correct? He was kind to others. He prayed. He, um, he, uh, he fed the needy. Correct? He, he gave them whatever they needed. People said, can you heal my son? He would go ahead and, and, and heal the son. He did miracles. But don't concentrate just about the miracles. He cared for the suffering of others, our Lord. So we have to also care for others. He fasted. Correct? The apostles fasted after him, and we also fast. So I spent a lot of time on this because this is the reason that we're all gathered together is to think about and celebrate um, the birth of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. And, it, and He came for the world. That is the very most important thing. And we're living in America, right? He came to save Americans too. He just didn't come to save a certain, a certain people, nation. Right? He came to save the world. So he's the Savior of the world. So that's a good question. So who's got the next question? All right, go ahead. In this country, some celebrate Christmas by just, by just decorating their houses with Christmas trees and ornaments and also by exchanging gifts. Why is that? That's an excellent question. Christmas trees. What else is part of the celebrations? You said gift giving. Okay, what else? Is he missing anything? Christmas lights. Christmas lights. Ornaments. Ornaments. I wrote some of these down because they're all significant. Anything else? Presents? Okay. So what you, you didn't mention something that it was very obvious. Go ahead. Grab the mic. Gathering with family. Yeah, man, you are all good. Gathering with family. What else? 
Go ahead. Grab the mic. I'm only going to give you one more chance. And when I say what you missed, you're going to be very upset with me. Stockings. Stockings. That's very good. Going to church. No, peep here. Well, they do go to church. You're right. Go ahead. Santa. Santa Claus, of course, of course. He was going to say Santa Claus, too. So, you, you mentioned a lot of traditions. These are a lot of traditions. I mean, do you, when, you, when we think about these things, do you feel that it, do you feel that it, 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 it um, reminds you of what you learn in church about Jesus? Does it, is it connected to him in any way? No. The Christmas trees? Um, I'll ask you another question. The Christmas trees, the lights. I mean, the lights, you can say, well, he is the light of the world, right? You know, I mean, you can say that. But a lot of these traditions, I'm going to tell you now, a lot of these traditions are not Christian traditions. What do I mean by that? Remember I told you our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, when he came, he taught the 72 apostles, right? He taught 12 disciples, and then they became 70, 72 apostles, and he taught them the, the, the holy, we call it holy tradition. Okay? And I'm sure all of you know what traditions are. Traditions are just manners of living that, that could be transmitted from one generation to another, either by speech or by writing or by painting. Okay? These are just tr traditions. But there's holy tradition that comes from God, from the Holy Spirit of God that is in each and every one of us. When we're baptized, the Holy Spirit lives in us. And that's why Christ came, is to give us this gift. Remember the gift we lost, the Holy Spirit? That's in us now. That's not leaving us. That's, what's gonna, that's how we're going to be one with God when Christ comes back and gives us His kingdom. So we have holy traditions, and where do we get those holy traditions from? The church. The church meaning us. The church meaning our fathers, the saints. They, our apostles, our Lord taught them these holy traditions that we have. And they did things to celebrate the birth of our Lord. One of the things they did was go to church. The main thing, the main thing, and we'll get to, we'll get to that later. But these traditions you're speaking of, the gift giving, the hanging on the socks, we'll cover a few of them. Okay? So the first thing, I, I don't think any of, any of you said Christmas tree. So, so that's, let's, let's tackle the, first, the, the tree first, right? The Christmas tree is the first one that we kind of know about in Santa, right? So where does it come from? There's a lot of different variations of where the Christmas tree comes from, okay? But I can tell you this. It does not come from Christian tradition, okay? From the holy tradition, meaning from our apostles. It does not come from the apostles, from the saints, from early Christians. We don't have that tradition. Well, remember, when Adam fell, what happened? The Holy Spirit left him, correct? The Spirit of God left him. He became lost. That's why the Lord came to find him, to find Adam. Get him out of hell. Get him out of death. Israel, the house of Israel. God chose the house of Israel to prepare the world. That's why the Israelis people are special people. God did choose them. But they did not accept him when he came. Because they thought he was going to come and rescue them from the Romans. And the Romans were colonizing Israel at the time. So when the Lord came, he said, I'm going to free you. They thought, is he going to free us from the Romans? Our Lord came not to free them from the Romans. He came to free them from who? Satan. Right. Satan was the real dictator, the real colonizer of our souls. We don't belong to Satan. But Satan tricked us and made us part of his kingdom. But we belong to God. And God said, no, that's not going to happen. And because the sin we committed, Adam committed, was so grave, there was no human being from the beginning of God of time to the end there's no human being that can actually take away the sin of the whole world except God himself and that's why God took his flesh and blood from the Virgin Mary who's pure 
She didn't have this original sin. She didn't. She was sinless, right? A holy Virgin Mary, she's sinless. She has no ounce, no sin. She does. She doesn't think sin. She doesn't do sin. She doesn't say sin. She is pure, pure and always. And so God abound with her. God abound in her, and He was born to save us from this. This is the tradition that keeps coming, and this is why we're so grateful. The greatest gift that God gave us is life. That's the greatest gift we should be thinking about during this time. Because man needs to find God. That's how we know God. There is a God. Because every human being in history, they try to find God all the time. If there was no God to find, why would they try to find God, right? There must be a real God. There must be one God that people are always trying to worship. That's why our faith is not just a faith that we just practice. It is a life that God gave to the world. It's a life. The whole world, even though we see the world now, it doesn't seem like a, a peaceful place. But truly, our Lord Jesus Christ brought, brought peace to the world. But now, people have to choose peace. People have to choose love. People have to choose joy and hope. All those things are here until our Lord comes back. Does God protect us? Does God bring us good health? Does God give us love? Yes. Does God protect us from bad spirits? Yes. Okay. Does God give us success and abundance? Yes. Abundance means good things, blessings. Yes, right? Yes. Last question. Go ahead. How should we celebrate Christmas? How should we celebrate Christmas? That is a beautiful question, and that is a very important question because... That is something we have control over. How and the things that we do, the decisions we make. And the church is always our guide. The church will always show us and guide us how we should celebrate Christmas. So before this wonderful feast, before the uh, Baal, right, of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, the birth, what did we do? We fasted, right? We fasted. So fasting is part of the celebration, okay? Fasting is preparing for this day, preparing for the birth of our Lord. So the first thing we have to do is fast. During fast, what do we do? We pray more, we go to church more, we feed the needy, we prostrate or, or perform some sick deaths in the day. Okay. So these are the things that, we, how we should celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And on that night, how do we truly celebrate it? By... Okay? Going to church. When we go to church, we take the Holy Qurban. Right? We take the Holy Qurban. This is how every Christian ought to truly celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because that is the true gift that God has given us. Our Lord Jesus Christ said Himself, I am the bread of life. He who eats from me will have life. I am the life. He is the light of the world. He, is, he gives us life and His holy flesh and His holy blood gives us eternal life. Eternal life. That is the true gift. And so that's why we go to church is to receive the Holy Qurban. And the older, older ones, the older kids, will go to their father confessor and they will, they will confess their sins and they will reconcile back with God and then they will receive God's gift. Because repentance means yikarta, correct? And yikarta means just asking God for forgiveness so that we can receive this gift, this holy gift. And so that every Christian, not just children, all Christians ought to celebrate Christmas by, whole, by receiving the Holy Qurban. Well, it was beautiful seeing everyone. And again, uh, we thank our Lord, God and Savior, Jesus Christ, for His saving grace, for all um, that He has taught us in this season, and He continues to teach us. And we should always remember, obedience, obedience, obedience is how we truly prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He showed us that He was obedient, and we are His children, so we should be obedient to our parents. We should be obedient to our fathers. Okay? All right? And then we should prepare and wait for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ so He can take us to heaven. 
Glory be to God forever, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thank you, our brother Matos. May you hear the words of life. We are sure you delighted in listening to our brother Matos and hope you were able to get a lot from his teaching. How do you plan on celebrating Christmas, Matos? Well, I celebrate two Christmases, Ethiopian and the American one. For the American, we decorate the house, we, we give out gifts, we spend time with family. And for example, me and my sister, especially in the COVID time, we, we made a program online, we play games, and since it's Christmas for presents, we do handcrafts, knitting, crochet, and things like that. For the Ethiopian Christmas, it's more spiritual. We, we go to church for Mahale, Tenkadase, and we also spend time with family. What about you? Well, every year my whole family goes to a church for Mahale, Tenkadase, and when we, after we f attend um, a church, we go back home and we eat traditional Ethiopian food. And since it's very early in the morning when we go back to our house, we sleep. And when I when we get up, I help my mother with uh, breakfast, and I help her with puna, and I spend time with my family. Our brothers and sisters, how do you celebrate Christmas? Now we will proceed to the next program, which our brother is going to share a hymn from the Book of Psalms. <laughs> All kings shall fall down before him. Our brother, thank you for sharing this hymn with us. May you hear the hymns of the angels. This is a hymn from the Book of Psalms that is sang on the night of Christmas. Next, you will hear our mesmer and continue the rest of our program. Stay tuned.
Thank you to our brother and sister who shared this hymn with us. May you hear the hymns of the angels. Beza Kullu Alam is one of the known mesmerists that our fathers sing on Beta Georgis. Beta Georgis is one of the 11 rock hewn churches that King Lali Bala made. Next, we will listen to a poem about this special holiday. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Happy Nativity. My name is Mabah Nabi Yalu'ul. The church I attend is Masaka Tzai Kudusa Kalaimanot. I'm also a student at Virginia Abunago Gurus Academy at Alexandra Branch. Hello, my name is Salma Tafara. I attend the same church and school as Mabah. The Savior of the world is born for us today, is born for us today, is born for us today. Joy be to all of you, for he is born for us today, he is born for us today, he is born for us today. To liberty from the curse and add some for Adam's misdeed, Christ was born and ascended down to this world. Joy be to all of you, for he is born for us today. He is born for us today. He is born for us today. As prophesied by the prophets counting down the years, Christ was born from Virgin Mary to honor his promise. God, who is omnipotent, laid in a stable. He was heated by the breath of the castle. While hearing the news of the birth of our God, Adam and his children were in hell and were consoled. Those who were waiting in this world sang out gladly, saying, Oh, a baby was born for us loudly. The Savior of the world is born for us today, is born for us today, is born for us today. Joy be to all of you, for he is born for us today, he is born for us today, he is born for us today. On hearing the good news, shepherds were excited. Um, they bowed down to the mother and the child bearing gifts. The three wise men came from beyond. To the kid, they offered gold and bowed. They gave incense to Christ, the newborn child. Maria was brought to his death so the curse of death would end. Man and angels were reconciled by, by the birth of God. Um, together they gave thanks, bowed, and prayed. To all of you, for he is born for us today. He is born for us today. He is born for us today. The Savior of the world is born for us today. Is born for us today. Is born for us today. His birth is unique, for by the birth we are redeemed. Let's gather in the Holy Church to give thanks to the newborn King. Let, let's, like the shepherd with joy, let us hear the priest's announcement. When we are called to the, to the church of the mother and the infant, his angels will once again come to the church for worship. Rejoice, rejoice, for he is born in Bethlehem. Rejoice. Rejoice, 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 for he is born in Bethlehem. Born for us today, he is born for us today. The Savior of the world is born for us today, is born for us today, is born for us today. Joy be to all of you, for he is born for us today, he is born for us today, he is born for us today. Thank you, our sisters. May you hear the words of life and the hymns of the angels. Children, we believe that you learned a lot from this poem. We shall return after hearing St. Yare's hymn. In the name, In the name of, of the Father, Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit, one God, Amen. My name is Buru Gihana. The school I attend to is Aunagorgoris uh, Alexandria Branch. The church I go to is Misragazaga Dusaklaimano Church. Hello, my name is Raham Mahela Michael. The church I attend is St. Arsima Gadam. The school I go to is Abunagur Gorio Silver Spring Branch. Tawala i Yasus Babieta Lehene Zayhuda Awalidati Rosa Meha Yasagira 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem, a part of Judea. The daughters of Tyre worshipped him. The three wise men came with gifts. The daughters of Tyre rejoiced. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Happy Nativity. My name is Nathanael Kabeda. The church I attend to is Misraka Zahek Adusta Klaibanot. The school I go to is Abuna Gorgorios, Virginia Alexandra Branch. My name is Leah Hill Michael. I'm a student at Abuna Gorgorios Academy, Silver Spring Branch. The church I attend is St. Arsima Gedam. Today I'll be presenting to you the hymns of St. Yarid. Hallelujah, Yom Behold, today light has dawned for us. He who the heavens and the earth could not bind was confined in the womb of the Virgin. The unfathomable God stayed in the womb of the Virgin. He was bound in the womb of the Virgin. He became a small child and was born outside of precedence. The Son of Truth rose. Thank you to our brother and sister who shared this Saint Yadid's hymn. May you both hear the hymns of the angels. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. My name is Maher Adisu and I'm nine years old and, and I'm a student of Amagurgur Chantilly Branch and I, I go to the Real Kudusrago. Today I brought this Ganna craft for, for, for Ganna Bal, Bal. And, and this is how it looks like when it's finished. How I made this is I, I I used a s simple pl platform, and I and I used some wood structures, and I used a a ruler, and and I and I used a pencil, and I used a hot glue gun. And and I used and I used dry grass too. And I used dry grass. So basically, how I made this is I took the my basic platform and I put these two structures on the and on the left and right, and I pasted it with hot glue gun. And then for the, uh, after I pasted it, I I used wood sticks and then I used wood sticks to use the hot glue gun and, and, and I pasted it on the top and then I made the roof and then for and plus I used the hot glue gun I pasted it and I put it on the sides and put it on the sides too and, and, and on one side I put a window to put light in, in, the, in the stable and, and, and in the back, I used a ruler to, to basically measure, measure, and I basically cu cut it out, and, and I used a and, and I used a scissor and I cut it and I glued it and, and I pasted the fence in the back. And for the front, I used dry grass as to represent as the sheep. In the front, I drew when 
when Mary was giving birth, birth to Jesus and when Yosef was n next to him. And this is how it looks like when it's finished. Thanks for listening. Our brother and sister, may you both hear the word of life in the hymns of the angels. We hope all of you in attendance today were able to gain a lot of wisdom from today's program. Thank you all who made this program possible. May you hear the words of life. And those who shared hymns with us, may you hear the hymns of the angels. May, may we all get the blessing of this holiday. holiday.